Well, welcome everyone. My name is John Brenneman and I'm with uh, Moa Vacations and I'm joined today by August Bont with Rocky Mountaineer and we have a lot of information we're going to cover today. So uh, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are recording uh, this webinar. So uh, either this evening or tomorrow morning, you will receive an email uh, which will have a link uh, to, uh, we'll actually upload this to YouTube. Uh, Moa Vacations has our own YouTube channel now. I think we have 40 some videos uploaded now. But anyway, we'll upload the video. We'll send you a link, uh, link so you can view it again or share with any friends or family that you have that might like to join. Um, we are going to do a QA and a uh, at the end. Uh, as soon as I'm kind of done talking a little bit more about MOA Vacations and who we are, um, I'm going to actually answer uh, questions during August's presentation. Um, and at the very end, the two of us are going to do a Q&A. Uh, if you ask, ask a question in the Q&A during his presentation that I think everybody would be interested in hearing more about, uh, we'll revisit that. So I might actually answer it online uh, and then we'll bring it up again at the end. So um, MOA Vacations. Uh, one of the things we always talk about, I'm sure people have heard me say this numerous times, we've been to other webinars, uh, is the fact that we provide superior service. We are and we continue to be the only travel agency in the United States who provides travel on a satisfaction guaranteed basis. And that means basically what it says. If you have a, a problem or an issue or a concern before or during your travel, uh, you contact us and we'll resolve that matter to your satisfaction. Uh, the majority of those actually come direct to me and I will go to uh, August or someone, at, uh, depending on what vendor you have, and the two of us will get that resolved. Uh, industry standard, believe it or not, uh, is typically uh, six to eight weeks. If somebody has a problem, uh, we do it in 48 hours. So uh, we, we look to get you the answer you want and get it to you in a very timely manner. Uh, we do guarantee the lowest prices. And in fact, we go a step further than that. Uh, we do have a free amenity program where in addition to the lowest price, we have a value added amenity. Uh, this value added amenity is to recognize both your past and continued service. Uh, as a member of uh, MOA. And then, of course, what we're going to talk about today is uh, group opportunities. We have uh, a second group this summer on Rocky Mountaineer. Um, and I'm going to let August talk about uh, this itinerary. It's really amazing. I, I think a lot of you have kind of seen it from the invitation or saw it in Military Officer Magazine. In fact, um, we have 50 seats. That would be the entire bus, the entire train car for this trip. We've already sold six people. So we only have 44 spots remaining. And believe it or not, we had 250, actually a little over 250 people register for this webinar. Um, so uh, as we go through this, when we get done, if you want to go, um, you know, I always hate to be kind of car salesman and say, you know, you need to buy right away if you want to go. But just the numbers tell us that if 250 people uh, signed up for this webinar, it is the largest one we've done since uh, February of last year when we did the uh, Colette Australia New Zealand tour, which was a little over 300. And so this is the largest, and we do two or three a month. So this is the largest we've had in a while. So we're pretty excited. Um, so without any further ado, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to August one sec, but I wanted to, to mention one other thing uh, about uh, our group opportunities and basically everything we offer. Um, everything we offer, the service, the pricing, the amenities, and the opportunity to travel with your fellow uh, MOA members on these group departures is available to you and all your friends and family. MOA members can bring as many uh, guests along with them as they want on anything you book with us, and they will get the same service, the same pricing, the same amenities. So um, I mentioned already we're going to send you a copy of the recording of this webinar. So if we get done and you get the copy of it and you have friends or family who you think would love to go on this as well, feel free to invite them. We always have friends and family on our MOA groups. Um, so uh, with that being said, a quick reminder, I'll be answering questions in the Q&A. And I'm going to turn it over to August because he's going to tell us more about Rocky Mountaineer and our fabulous Canadian Rockies groups. August, Great. take it away. Thank you so much, John. Uh, and thank you to everyone who's uh, logged in and viewing uh, this afternoon. We appreciate uh, your your interest in uh, MOA Vacations and, and Rocky Mountaineer. So I uh, just kind of wanted to go over a quick intro of who Rocky Mountaineer is, uh, what we do, uh, kind of what we're known for. And then from there, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, this great group opportunity uh, with MOA uh, later on in August, uh, this summer coming up in two months. Uh, so Rocky Mountaineer, we are um, we're a tour operator first and foremost. 
Uh, we operate tours in Western Canada as well as the U.S. <clears throat> but really the heart of that, the, the center of those tours are focused on our daylight only train trips through the Canadian Rockies. Um, we are known for our world-class service. We've been up in business since 1990. And since then, we've hosted over 2 million people. I believe we're pushing about 2.5 million people now uh, that we've hosted on board our uh, luxury daylight-only sightseeing trains uh, through Canada. So there's a little map here of what, uh, what our, uh, our, our routes look like, right? We have three routes in Western Canada, as well as one route in the U.S. that we'll go into a little bit more detail in uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, now, these solid lines that you see, the different colored solid lines, those are our rail journeys. Now, I mentioned that we are daylight only. So what that means is that overnight, you're not staying in uh, in the train, no, no bunk beds or sleeper cars, anything like that. You are staying in uh, wonderful hotels in these white diamond uh, midpoints. Uh, now, these uh, green dotted lines you see uh, about the map, these are transfers. These are um, uh, beautiful sightseeing transfers uh, through just uh, some of the most magnificent places in the world, um, but there are no rail tracks there. So we do need to get you from, uh, from the airports uh, to the start or end point of our journeys. So with that, um, kind of a little bit of, that was a little bit about who we are, right? Um, what we do, daylight only luxury train trips. Uh, we are not about transportation, right? We are about enjoying these beautiful places uh, in just the, the height of comfort and luxury um, and just these beautiful remote areas. So to talk about this group opportunity we have uh, for the summer, um, we have a um, eight night trip, August 13th to the 21st, uh, going westbound from Calgary out to Vancouver. So those numbers there, you can see how many nights you're spending in each place. So one night Calgary, two nights Banff, uh, the beautiful uh, Icefields Parkway up to Jasper, two nights Jasper, one night Kamloops, and then uh, two nights in the beautiful Vancouver uh, before the journey ends. So starting off the trip in Calgary. Um, you fly into Calgary and you'll have one night at the Delta Hotel in uh, Marriott property. Now this is very centrally located. Uh, Calgary is kind of this uh, modern Western frontier town out in the Great Plains, uh, but the Delta Hotel, this is um, uh, about a 10 minute walk from the great um, uh, Stevens Avenue, which is a nice uh, pedestrian only shopping district, as well as about a 20 minute walk from uh, the Calgary Stampede area. Um, uh, the Stampede isn't uh, running unfortunately during this time, but you can still go see uh, the, the great venue where, where that's held. Uh, so you'll have, uh, wh whatever time your flight lands, you'll have that afternoon, that evening to go out and explore Calgary and uh, just get a restful night's sleep before uh, uh, the journey starts. Uh, um, really the, the sightseeing trips start the next day. Um, there's that wonderful uh, Stevens Avenue um, that's uh, the pedestrian only uh, shopping district in Calgary. But the next morning, this is really where the trip begins. You're going to have a, a guided transfer um, from Calgary out to uh, Banff. So it's really neat here is Calgary, like I said, is out in the Great Plains. About an hour and a half later, you are in the heart of the Canadian Rockies uh, heading into Banff. Um, this this uh, guided transfer also includes um, the Banff gondola up to the Sulphur Mountain. Um, up on top of the Sulphur Mountain, there's a there's a cafe, there's fire pits. Uh, there's just an amazing vantage point. Uh, uh, sometimes the clouds hang a little bit low over town, and so the gondola actually pierces through the clouds. And you just once you're up top, you see all the snow-capped peaks. It's absolutely wonderful. What I really like to point out on this slide, though, the hotel you're staying in this evening in Banff is the Banff Springs Hotel, the Castle in the Rockies. You can just see it the bottom center of the screen there. Uh, we'll get a better shot in just a second, but it's uh, wonderfully centrally located just between um, Sulphur Mountain, uh, Mount Rundle, uh, the amazing golf course that's out there, um, as well as downtown, you can see kind of on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. But there's that top of Sulphur Mountain, right? Uh, uh, there's the, there's cafe, there's fire pits. It's all um, uh, uh, paved out, right? Uh, there's a nice uh, platform area 
uh, to go out and just see all these amazing uh, snow-capped uh, Canadian Rockies. Just remember earlier that morning, you're out in the Great Plains in, uh, in Calgary, and now just an hour and a half uh, motor coach ride later, um, you're in the beautiful uh, world-renowned town of Banff. Now, there is the castle and the Rockies, the Banff Springs Hotel. Uh, you'll sp be spending two nights here uh, as well that um, you get out, get to go out and get to explore the, the town and go out and get to see Banff National Park and maybe look for some wildlife and just see these uh, amazing untouched landscapes. Um, so after your evening in uh, the beautiful hotel um, uh, castle in the Rockies, Banff Springs, uh, you get to uh, go out on a sightseeing tour through um, Banff National Park. Um, this is called the Mountain Lakes and Waterfall Tour, and uh, you get to see these beautiful, beautiful uh, emerald and turquoise green uh, lakes. You get to go out and see the iconic Chateau Lake Louise, uh, go take a little walk around the path out there. Um, and then um, uh, here's a little map of that route. So stop number one is in Banff, when you're, where you spent the night the, in the night the hotel the night before. And you go out through Moraine Lake. Uh, the spiral tunnels, uh, which were an absolutely amazing engineering marvel. Um, our first passage to the west route does run through the spiral tunnels. Uh, but what I really like about this journey through the clouds trip with Moa is that you get the best of both worlds. You get to see Banff, you get to spend see Lake Louise, but you also get to go up to Jasper. Um, and then you go through uh, the Emerald Lake Lodge, where you'll be having lunch. Uh, finish off the day at the, uh, just absolutely beautiful Chateau Lake Louise, and then head back into Banff. Uh, there's a great shot of the Chateau Lake Louise. And what you'll really see a common theme throughout this trip is just the untouched natural beauty um, that the Canadian Rockies has to offer. Um, there are a few highways that, that allow people to get from one place to the next, but besides that, there are only a few small towns kind of dotted between these areas. So you really just get a full sense of scale of, of what the Canadian Rockies have to offer. Now this next shot I have here is one of my favorites in the presentation. This is my family back in 2016. Uh, this is at Moraine Lake, one of these lakes that you get to see along the trip. What I love here is look at that blue rain jacket that I'm wearing. It just about blends in with the blue and the water behind. This is not Photoshop. This is taken with a probably like an iPhone five or six or something, however many years ago, right? Um, and so just seeing these, these beautiful emerald and turquoise blue lakes is like nothing you've ever seen before. Typically you're thinking like, I don't know, Tahiti or the Bahamas or something, but uh, seeing it in the, in the middle of the Rockies is stunning. And then that evening after the trip ends, uh, you get to spend a, a, a lovely afternoon or uh, um, evening kind of shopping around and go to get dinner uh, in the wonderful bustling little town of Banff. Um, but after that, uh, after your second night at the, at the um, Fairmont Banff Springs, you head out into the heart of the Rockies on your way up to Jasper. Uh, this is called the Icefields Parkway, and hands down, it is one of the most beautiful scenic drives in your in the entire world that you'll ever see in your life. Um, and so, on the long, along the way, you'll take five or six different stops. Uh, your your motor coach drivers kind of pointing things out. Your your tour guides point things out along the way. Um, you get to go out onto the uh, uh, Athabasca Glacier. Uh, now these tires are like four feet tall. They are massive. These are a beast of a vehicle. Um, and uh, in the summer, like you're traveling, there's a little bit of uh, that um, glacier glacial melt happening, and the water is clean enough that you can put your water bottle down into that glacial runoff and just take a nice cold, deep swig of that glacier water. It's really, really neat. Another stop out here is the Skywalk. Uh, now, for me, I might be a little jittery <laughs> to take that step out there, uh, but it is worth it. Just uh, being thrown out on top of this um, uh, uh, beautiful uh, fjord um, is like nothing you've ever experienced before. Just having that, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you feel like a bird when you're flying, <laughs> a bird flying high above the, uh, the, val the valley floor. And then uh, the lunch at the... Um, uh, uh, along the Icefields Parkway tour, there's this wonderful restaurant right on the, along the highway with these massive windows. Uh, they give you this great expanse onto the, these glaciers, and you can just, um, just sit there and just take in this peaceful, relaxing uh, view and just kind of watch nature run its course and picture what this may have looked like 
millions of years ago when the mountains were forming and the glaciers were, were um, uh, compacting and these, these valleys were uh, slowly being carved out, all while dining on this just <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful lunch. And then that evening, uh, you're staying at the Jasper Park Lodge. Uh, now, Jasper is a dark sky preserve, the second largest dark sky preserve in the entire world. And so what I really recommend on your two nights at the Fairmont Jasper Park Lodge is if you can take a little walk around these paths, uh, maybe get away a couple hundred meters away from, um, uh, from the lodge, you can just take in these wonderful, stunning um, uh, starlight vistas at night that you've, like you've never seen before. Um, there is a teeny, tiny, little, small chance. It doesn't happen super often in the summer, but Jasper is far enough north that if the conditions are right, there is an outside chance that you could see the Northern Lights. I am not promising anything. Don't come back to me, but all the conditions have to line up absolutely perfectly. But because it's a, a dark sky preserve, uh, there you do have a little bit better odds up this way. Uh, now, after your, your uh, wonderful evening at the Jasper Park Lodge, uh, your next day includes a, another sightseeing trip out and around Jasper. So uh, you get to take the Maligne Lake uh, cruise, uh, go out, uh, see Medicine Lake, go over the uh, Maligne Canyon, um, kind of uh, the, the Maligne Canyon Bridge. It's just an amazing um, uh, trip. So there's the, the Maligne Lake. And then what I really like on this picture here of Jasper is kind of in the center right hand side, you can see the Jasper Park Lodge um, right on right on top of that uh, lake there. It's a little bit outside of town. So like I was talking about the lights, uh, the light pollution is just a, a little bit lower. So more likely you're gonna see the beautiful stars at night. Um, you can also see the railroad tracks go right into town. Um, but one more thing, right? Just this untouched, beautiful landscape in the heart of the Rockies is just kind of a common theme that you're gonna get um, uh, along this journey. But now that we've made it, we've made it through one night of Calgary, two nights in Banff, two nights Jasper, we are ready for an amazing two days on board Rocky Mountaineer uh, on into Vancouver. Now this journey through the clouds route of our three routes up in Canada is my personal favorite. Uh, really what I like about it the most is that um, uh, there, again, I'm, I'm gonna sound like a broken record but record for these untouched landscapes, right? getting that true sense of the wilderness out there. And on top of it, uh, the wildlife. The wildlife um, in August, uh, they're slowly really starting to forage, getting ready for that, that uh, bulking up for winter. As well as the long, warm summer days, they're gonna be basking out in the sun. They're not gonna be hiding in the shade. And so you're gonna have great opportunities to, uh, to, to spot wildlife along the journey. But Rocky Mountaineer, now that we've kind of uh, moved away from the, the tour side things, now, now we've made it on board, what we're known for is our world-class service. Um, we've been doing this for, uh, for 34 years now, and we've won all kinds of awards. But really the heart of it is the, the onboard crew. We're called hosts. I, I used to be one of them. I, I didn't say that at the start. I worked on board for three seasons before uh, moving over to this, uh, this sales side. But the hosts on board, uh, they take so much personal pride in the service that we give. Um, the fact that uh, these hosts get to do this day in and day out uh, for years at a time, uh, we, we pinch ourselves how lucky we are. And when we get to make these life-changing moments for our guests on board is really what drives us to that next level of, um, of world-class service. So to talk a little bit about what, what a day looks like uh, on board Rocky Mountaineer. Um, first off, you get checked in with our, with our team um in that top uh, top left picture there and after that uh we we whisk your luggage away uh never to be seen again <laughs> i'm kidding um we we do take your luggage away in the morning we put it on a motor coach just send it on into cam loops um and then it gets sorted there and puts in into your room and so you don't need to worry about your luggage what i recommend is to bring a little day bag with you maybe, maybe a sweater or a water bottle uh, maybe reading glasses, whatever you might need for the day. But your main luggage will be waiting for you in your room uh, when you get to the next town. Um, and then once you step on, to, on board uh, our Gold Leaf service, uh, you're greeted with an amazing, amazing breakfast. What's really special about Gold Leaf is there is a full kitchen on board. And so all the food is prepared fresh. The food that you're having 
is what you'd expect to have in the uh, finest restaurants in the biggest cities. The fact that you're having it on board a moving train is um, uh, just really stunning. Um, it's just an elegant, elevated, uh, beautiful meal service. Uh, what I would classify Rocky Mountaineer, I've, I've said that we're luxury. Uh, really on top of that, we're a modern luxury. When you hear luxury train, uh, you might think old world, white glove service, but really what we are is we're, we're modern, we're elegant, we're with the times, we're gonna give these uh, uh, beautiful meals uh, and just this amazing, just kind of hands-on and uh, uh, personalized service. Uh, now on top of it, uh, we only travel about 30 miles an hour. I told you we're not about transportation, right? Uh, and so there's plenty of time to see these amazing sights as you go by. Uh, the crew, they're on radio. And so the conductors up front, they radio back to the entire train to let them know if there's any um, big wildlife sightings coming up. And on top of it, the engineers, they know that we're a sightseeing train, right? So on all, all the really big highlights, they pull the train back to a crawl. And so we're going like five miles an hour over these, these 200 foot tall bridges past these uh, amazing waterfalls where you can feel the mist coming off uh, um, off the waterfall into your face. It's really, really special and so refreshing. But my personal favorite part, besides the food, besides the sights, uh, my favorite part of the journey is the commentary. Uh, your hosts, they are trained um, and they are world-class storytellers. Uh, they know the geology, the history, the wildlife, the cowboy stories, the railroad stories. They're going to keep you entertained and informed. And uh, they are like walking encyclopedias. Being on board Rocky Mountaineer is uh, like being in a living, living storytelling book. It's really, really special and just so much more enhances the trip if you know what you're seeing as you're going by besides just seeing these beautiful sights. And then at night, right, uh, as we pull into the station, um, your room key uh, has art. You've already been checked into the room for you. So as you're stepping off the train, your room key is handed to you. Uh, you get over to the hotel. And then um, uh, once you walk into the hotel, what's waiting for you? Your luggage. Your luggage is in your room already. So it's just amazing. Uh, just all those little touches that we do is really what kind of kind of makes us special and separates us. So to talk about our gold leaf service that we're operating um, uh, for this trip, uh, the gold leaf domes are our double decker rail cars. Upstairs is where you're gonna spend most of the day. That's where those uh, beautiful picture windows, oversized windows are. And then downstairs where you see those windows, that is the dining car. And so there are two meal services on board, uh, breakfast and lunch, as well as snacks throughout the day. Uh, dinner would be on your own, but uh, likely you've had so much food on Rocky Mountaineer. Very rarely do I hear the guests uh, need to go out for dinner uh, after spending a day on board Rocky Mountaineer. So there's that upstairs viewing car, right? Those huge oversized windows, uh, tons of leg room, uh, uh, our new iteration of our gold leaf domes. We're not running on the same one since 1990. Uh, our new iteration uh, that we bought about four years ago are $10 million a piece. And they come with all the modern bells and whistles, uh, heated seats, footrests that pop out, uh, those beautiful dome windows. Uh, They're like transition lenses in the sense that as it gets sunny out, uh, the crew on board will move a dimmer. And so the windows actually dim so you don't have to squint as you're seeing all the beautiful sights as you're going by. Uh, now downstairs, right? This is the wonderful dining car. It's all set up in booths of four. And what's great though, is they're centered on the windows. So these huge, beautiful windows are right in the middle of the, uh, of the booths. And on top of it, uh, you're not, so you're not gonna miss any of the commentary. You're not gonna miss any of the sights as you're dining on this gourmet elevated uh, uh, luxury meal. Um, all of our meals are, are two or three, um, uh, two or three uh, courses. And so it's just a very relaxed, enjoyable way. Uh, we're not gonna rush you from one course to the next and kick you out of the dining room and move you on to the next. It's just, there's tons of time on board and we're, we're just wanna have a, make sure you have a leisurely and enjoyable trip um, uh, with us. Um, on top of that though, so what I, well, what I really recommend though with this um, is uh, invite your friends, right? If you wanna uh, have a great, uh, uh, um, meals with with your friends it's a very fun social atmosphere especially traveling with groups that's why i love this group travel that that uh, uh mo is doing is everyone gets super familiar with each other 
And uh, it's just a very fun social atmosphere uh, on board. To kind of enhance that social atmosphere uh, is our outdoor viewing platform. So what's really interesting is Rocky Mountaineer. We are not classified as passenger service. We're not classified as freight. We're classified as an excursionist train, which is what allows us to have this huge outdoor viewing platform. Uh, it fits about 15 people. And uh, in my experience, I've never seen it full. Uh, so there's plenty of room to kind of move about and stretch the legs, get some fresh air, uh, take some pictures that might not have that uh, glass reflection from the dome upstairs. And you're free to move about uh, throughout the rail car through, through, the, uh, through the two days on board. Now to look at some of the sites that we have uh, uh, waiting for us, uh, that beautiful picture on the left is the Pyramid Falls, which is a provincial park. Um, uh, it's like a, a Canadian state park. And this is one of those waterfalls that you can um, feel the mist um, as, as, as you go by. It's just um, a super unique experience being able to have an outdoor viewing platform, crawling by, going five miles an hour, um, just seeing these untouched landscapes. Uh, that top right hand picture that is Mount Robson, the tallest peak in the Canadian Rockies, uh, just about 12,900 feet, just a hair under 13. Um, but it has its own weather system and it's so much higher above the, the valley floor. Uh, it's about eight or 9,000 feet higher than the valley floor. So it has its own weather system up there, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then just these, these wonderful lakes and rivers um, that we get to see as, as you go by. Now your evening in Kamloops. Uh, this is after we've had one day on board Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, you do have one night in Kamloops uh, before you head on to the next day. Most people ask me what's waiting for me in Kamloops. Usually my answer is your pillow. <laughs> You've had probably a, a nine hour day on board Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, and you're ready for a, a great restful night's sleep uh, before you head on uh, the next day. If you are uh, have a little bit of extra energy, you can go take a walk along the Kamloops uh, River down there. Uh, in the summer, when you're traveling, there are daily concerts that the city puts on. Uh, there's a little bar and shopping shopping area district uh, as well. Uh, now on to the wildlife, right? What, what wildlife might you see uh, in Border Rocky Mountaineer? Uh, you've got uh, grizzly bears, black bears, uh, eagles, uh, moose, elk, osprey. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, bighorn sheep, right? Um, and because of these untouched landscapes, because there's not much human disturbance, this is really where the wildlife likes to hang out. Uh, especially there are a lot of grain, grain trains, like corn trains, right? Um, that uh, freight that runs along these tracks and sometimes the grain spills. And so the wildlife loves, loves to come and uh, kind of pick at that spilt grain along the track. So plenty of wildlife opportunities. Uh, the wildlife is actually so consistent that we have named a few of the animals. There is a an albino grizzly bear along the tracks uh, that they've named. There's some osprey that they've named. Uh, the eagles that I got to name in the US, uh, I named them Eddie and Edith. <laughs> uh, I got to see them week in and week out. So tons of wildlife viewing opportunities along the route. And then just some more shots on, on uh, day two from Kamloops down into Vancouver. So you're leaving a little bit of the Rocky Mountains, but what you're gaining is that uh, beautiful Pacific Northwest, um, that rainforest area that you kind of associate with uh, Washington, Oregon, that also extends up into Vancouver, uh, into uh, 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 British Columbia, right? So you go on, along seven different rivers on day two from Kamloops into, into Vancouver, and each one is completely unique from the last in the coloration, um, in, the, uh, in the size and, and how big it is, right? And the, the water is clear enough that you can actually see the fish swimming along in the river. But I've been talking for a few minutes, right? I've shown you some pictures, but I think uh, a video is a little bit more impactful. Uh, just give you a sense of what, uh, uh, what the journey looks like.
that's just a great video kind of uh, puts together all the pieces that I've been talking about, right? It's it's not just the the storytelling. It's not just the amazing food. It's not just the local wine. Uh, it's not just that uh, hands-on personalized uh, luxury service. It's all those pieces put together uh, that really what makes Rocky Mountain here special. So to kind of continue on with what the uh, what the trip looks like, finishing into Vancouver with your your two evenings there. Uh, Vancouver is just this great coastal town. There's uh, opportunities to go to the to the beach and the mountains. Uh, you can you can uh, go swimming and skiing in the same day. And so it's just a beautiful beautiful area uh, uh, to see right along uh, the coast. Uh, your your two evenings uh, in Vancouver, where you'll be staying at the Fairmont Hotel of Vancouver. Uh, just another great Fairmont property uh, that's elegant and elevated and just a, a great uh, last restful two nights uh, to enjoy before uh, uh, heading back home. Um, but after your first night in Vancouver, right, we do have two nights there. Uh, we have a, a day trip uh, planned for all of you. Uh, you get to go out and see the uh, Capilano Suspension Bridge. Uh, you can go see uh, the uh, beautiful Grass Mountain, take the gondola up to the top and just get an amazing vantage point of uh, this uh, coastal uh, Pacific Northwest um, rainforest area. Then, like I said, you have your one more evening in the Fairmont Hotel uh, before your last day uh, heading out in to, back home, right? So uh, two nights in Vancouver, and then uh, the next day you, you take your flight home at uh, whatever time that, that flight's scheduled for, but nothing's planned for that day. So if you do have an evening flight planned, um, you do have uh, the free day to go out and explore uh, on your own and kind of a uh, uh, circle back to maybe something that you passed along the motor coach that day that you might want to uh, see again. Uh, to, so to talk a little bit about pricing, right? Uh, for this uh, amazing uh, one of a kind trip, um, for double occupancy, it's $67.99. Uh, single occupancy is $87.99. And then one more, one more little note here. Um, so that's uh, kind of a little bit about uh, this this uh, amazing trip that we have uh, planned for all of you uh, coming up in August. We hope to see uh, you on board. Uh, but one more note, I told you at the beginning, I wanted to talk about our US routes. Um, I know uh, John and I might be planning some stuff uh, in the future to, to uh, uh, have another MOA trip on our US route. Uh, so uh, this is our newest uh, uh, operation in our rail network. Uh, we opened up two and a half years ago, and we've had three amazing seasons on board. We're getting ready for our fourth season here in about uh, two months. Um, but uh, what really separates uh, our U.S. route from our Canadian route is I like to think of it as a more a kind of Western um, uh, 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 cowboys and outlaws and just these huge expansive landscapes. But you also get the Rocky Mountains uh, just west of Denver. And so there's a great overlay of that Denver to Moab route with an overnight in Glenwood Springs. Um, but these uh, these beautiful reds along the trip are like you have never seen before. Uh, this is uh, the beautiful Burns Canyon, just a little bit outside of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, so from here going back eastbound, uh, you, you climb about 4,000 feet uh, into the heart of the Rockies and you get the same beautiful sights that you get in Canada, uh, but you also get that beautiful Western landscape uh, just west of Glenwood Springs uh, these uh, this wonderful cowboy country, right? Um, another great shot there. What I like to point out, right? These untouched landscapes. Um, but really, on top of that is uh, look around. No roads, no trails. The only access to these places is the rail line. Um, our routes that we take uh, are only accessible uh, generally by train. And by and large, we are the only train that operates along these routes. So. If you'd like to see these beautiful places in uh, Western Canada and the Rocky Mountains, uh, you need to take it on board uh, on board Rocky Mountaineer. And then finishing into Moab, it's a very outdoorsy, adventurous place. You go to see the, the hoodoos, the spires, the, the beautiful arches in Arches National Park, take a slick rock tour. Uh, it's just a, a very adventurous way to, to travel after your two luxurious days on board Rocky Mountaineer. Um, so I've talked about the world-class service, right? But really what I want to point out are, are some amazing awards we have um, in front of us. Uh, that top right one though, the Travel and Leisure Magazine named uh, our, our Rocky Mountaineer, the best train travel in the world for 2023, something that we are very, very proud of. And that includes our US route. Even though we started two and a half years ago, uh, uh, they included that in their, their decision-making process. 
And so um, we are just uh, uh, very, very proud of that to, to have received that award a couple months ago. But on top of it, right, so to finish off, we're just about to the end here. Um, I've been talking for a while, uh, and, and I think it means a little bit more uh, if you hear about what the experience is like on Border Rocky Mountaineer, if you hear it from uh, some actual guests. Okay, describe to me the experience of the Rocky Mountaineer. Gosh. to describe the feeling aboard Canada's Rocky Mountaineer. Experience it for yourself. Visit RockyMountaineer.com. So with that, right, I, I mentioned it a minute ago. It's really hard to put into words. Uh, it's, it makes you speechless what, what, uh, what this trip is going to entail, right? The, it's not just the, the uh, world-class food. It's not just the service. It's not just the scenery. Um, it, it's uh, the, the, all of those pieces put together, the little touches, the, the luggage transfers, the guided trip that Mo is putting together for you, being able to uh, know what you're seeing from point A to point B, from Calgary up to Vancouver to Jasper, on into, um, uh, or through Banff, Jasper, and down to Vancouver. Just all those pieces put together is what's really, really special about uh, uh, this trip that uh, uh, John has uh, partnered with us and put together for the summer. With that, uh, thank you so much. I'm going to put the contact info up for John and think we're about ready for our, uh, our Q&A. Indeed we are. Uh, we've got a lot of questions, so we'll jump to that in just a second. Uh, I just want to remind everybody uh, that we are recording this webinar. Uh, we will um, actually edit it, uh, download it, edit it, and then upload it to YouTube. And as soon as that's done, we'll send everybody an email with a... Uh, with a link to that uh, YouTube video. Uh, we'll also include, everybody should have received a link to a website we have set up for this group. Uh, we will include that in the email again, so you can go back and look at that. Uh, real quick, uh, before we get to the q and I did wanna talk about the Rockies to Red Rocks. That is actually the first MOA group we did uh, back in 2021. Um, and that was, so, I mean, it was universally play, praised. Everyone loved it. Uh, so we did another group in 2022, we did a group in 2023, uh, and then we find ourselves in 2024. Uh, somebody did ask uh, if we were going to do that Rockies to uh, Red Rock again. Uh, we will, it will not be this year, uh, but August and myself uh, are already talking uh, about putting up, uh, putting together a couple of groups, which will be a Canadian Rockies and a Rockies to Red Rocks. Uh, in 2025. So um, you can do this um, journey to the clouds this year and then next year know that we'll have another itinerary available to you. All righty, let's just get in. I'm going to kind of do them in the order they came in. So um, the first question was, uh, are we going to do uh, Denver to Moab again? And of course, the answer to that is yes. Um, somebody asked if boots are required uh, at the top of the mountains and passes. Um Boots are not required. Um, I would say um, bring a shoe that's uh, uh, going to give you a little bit of traction. Um, but that that snowy picture I showed you on top of uh, the Sulphur Mountain gondola, uh, they keep those decks brushed off the best they can, yeah. especially in the summer. Um, you're not really going to get a whole lot of, lot of uh, snow in August. The snow doesn't really start until mid to late September. Um, Maybe on the glacier, I might recommend just a, a tennis shoe or something a little bit hardier than a um, than a uh, kind of no flat flip flops and probably not. Yeah, no, no flip flops. Right. I'd, I'd wear some tennis shoes on your day yeah. between Banff and uh, and yeah. Jasper. You can go on the glacier, but you don't need to wear crampons or or spikes or anything like that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, somebody asked, and I'll admit I missed it too because I was uh, answering questions in the Q and A. 
is is the lake cruise included on the Jasper stop? I would assume if you talked about it, it was. Correct. Yeah, the Malign Lake cruise is a part of that uh, uh, your 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 day um, in uh, in Jasper. Okay. Um, on the uh, on the gold leaf service on the train, the question was: Are there menu options, or is it a set um, menu? Can you kind of Thank talk you. about? Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the Thank you very much. I, uh, I I may have rushed over that a little too quickly. So. Uh, for gold leaf service, uh, for all the meals, there are, are usually five or six different options. This is going to be a restaurant style service. Uh, when you're in your booth, the server is going to come up to you, offer you something to drink, uh, get you your, uh, your starter. And then uh, from there, they'll take your order for your main. So you've got five or six different options. Um, and you can kind of customize a little bit. Like I said, it's a full kitchen. So if you want to play around with a little bit of the meals, you, you're welcome to do that. If you have any dietary concerns, uh, please let John know uh, when you make the booking. That way we can make a note and absolutely 100% make sure that we have um, the uh, the adjustments or the dietaries um, that, that you require. Um, and we're more than capable and more than happy to do it. The only thing we can't do uh, is kosher. We don't have a rabbi on board. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, any and every dietary, we are uh, uh, more than happy and capable and uh routinely accommodate for. There you go. Uh, and just to clarify, uh, don't let me know, let your cruise consultant or your travel consultant yes. rather know. Uh, so Lisa or Steve or Mike or whoever, when you call or email, um, yeah. the three of them are working on this group. Um, so they're the ones that you'd want to let that information know. So um, somebody asked with 50 people, is that two uh, dome buses? That's, uh, or excuse me, dome cars. That's obviously one. Uh, is that the capacity 50 is the capacity on that? Uh, we do have uh, the, the, it seats up to uh, 72 people, but usually we leave a little bit of wiggle room and some, okay. some, some seats. Yep. There you go. There are, there are 72 seats in the rail car, but we leave okay. some wiggle room. There um, this question is about the buses. Um, I, I assume we'll use a couple of different buses during the tour, but uh, are there restrooms on the buses? Uh, there are restrooms on the bus. Uh, it is uh, uh, Brewster uh, or uh, Pursuit is their new name uh, who um, who operate that. Oh, sorry, I uh, Gary, I gave you the the wrong answer. Uh, Gary asked what the price for Rocky's Red Rock trip was, and I actually gave the pricing for this trip. I apologize, as I think I uh, said, uh, maybe not in response to you to someone else, or maybe I just said right now. Uh, we don't actually have a date yet. So if we don't have a date, we have a price. Um, we are working with Rocky Mountaineer to go in and find a departure date that will, will work uh, for us. Um, and we will have that information. Um, I, I, I know each year you're, you're getting that out a little bit further as things kind of mm -hmm. get back to normal. So uh, hopefully in the next, say, 60, 90 days, we'll have the uh, dates and the departures uh, for 2025, we will absolutely have them uh, well in advance of this departure going in August. So when, when you go on the one in August, you'll already know what the options are for the next year. So, and and all we know so far is we're gonna do uh, Red Rocks, uh, Rockies to Red Rocks, what they call RTR. Um, and so we don't know what the other itinerary uh, will be. We've done First Passage, we're doing clouds for the first time this year. Um, so August and I are in the discussions. If anybody has any suggestions, they have four itineraries available. Um, somebody's already mentioned, or maybe even two people mentioned the uh, the Rockies to Red Rock. So if there's one of the itineraries you'd like to see us do in 2025, we still have not made uh, the decision on number two yet. So feel free uh, to drop us an email at that address below and say, I would like you guys to do such and such itinerary. And we'll certainly uh, take that into consideration because these are put together for you, obviously. Okay. Um, how many meals are included on the trip? I think that's on the flyer, isn't it? Or do you have that information, Andy? I, I don't have it off the top of my head. Uh, it's a couple of breakfasts um, uh, on, on board the train. Uh, you get your breakfast and your lunch. So there's there's four meals there two day, uh, between the two days, right? Um, I, I don't have that info in front of me, but uh, there are a few extra meals included that are not a part of the uh, the train trip. Yeah, uh, uh, on the uh, on the itinerary the, on the website, and we'll send you a copy of that. Uh, it does list the meals that are included on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, it has it uses that kind of common if you haven't seen it before. It's BLD. So when you look at, for example, I'm looking, um, you know, uh, what's one of the dates I was just going to do? Really? Banth to Dan uh, to Jasper. Uh, it lists that lunch is included. So when you see the L in the parentheses at the end of that day's itinerary, so it's B for breakfast, L for lunch, D for dinner. Yeah. And as I said, you'll get a copy of that website. Uh, that has the day-to-day -day itinerary in it. So um, you can kind of go through and see everything uh, that is included. Um, passports are required. Uh, yes, passports yeah. are required to go to Canada. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's a new thing. Uh, over the <laughs> last few years, uh, they instituted it, I think in 2019, or, or excuse me, in, in 2020. And that remains... Um, a requirement of Canada. Of course, it's like we say with all of these things, uh, we have absolutely no control over that whatsoever. So, you know, back in 2018, 2019, a passport was not required. Uh, will they change it going forward? I don't know. But for right now, uh, Canada requires U.S. citizens to have a passport to enter Canada. Um, okay, this one's a, 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 you'll impress me if you know the answer to this one. If not, we can certainly research it for you, Russell, and get back to you. So I'm just going to read you the question. Is it possible to get a transfer to the Alaska Marine Highway in Vancouver? Then transportation to Juneau and airport is easy. My wife and I have done sections of the Alaska Marine Highway and found it very beautiful and reasonable. And I'll be honest, um, I don't really understand that question. I haven't heard of the Alaska Marine Highway. Um, I know, I mean, if it connects to Vancouver, um, you have your night in Van you have your two nights in Vancouver. And then after that, if you'd like to stay in Stay in Vancouver. You don't have to book a flight home. It's uh, uh, your trip, your vacation, right? Um, uh, a lot of our guests, um, they add on an Alaskan cruise on top of their Rocky Mountaineer journey. Uh, so if you'd like to book the MOA vacation and then uh, um, afterwards, you don't want to take the flight home. That's uh, more than uh, uh, more than capable and up, up to your uh, personal decision. Gotcha. Uh, somebody asked about age limitations. Uh, I don't know. Do you know what the minimum and the ma is there a maximum age? No maximum age. I mean, if you're if you're uh, wanting to take the trip with us, we're we're welcome to uh, have you on board. Uh, minimum age. Um, I want to say it's like one year, eighteen months, or something like that. Yeah. I've never seen any babies on board. I, again, yeah. I worked on board for three seasons. Um, every once in a while, we do have some children. I'd say once every three weeks or so, I, I'd see a family on board with uh, some kids and they're they're eight to 16 years old or so. Uh, what I will say about the kids is they are, um, they're not rambunctious. rambunctious. They are, they're eyes to the window, uh, look, looking for any wildlife, looking for the trains going by. Uh, they're the most respectful, well-mannered, um, engaging, fun, um, people yeah I, I i really enjoyed having the kids on board and i i'm not really a kid person honestly <laughs> but uh the, the kids that i've seen on board are, are super respectful and well-mannered um yeah i i would say um when we do moa groups we obviously tell moa members uh they can bring family and friends family would include grandkids um i do know we did like a duro river cruise where we took the entire cruise ship uh, I think that was in 2022. Um, one member did bring her 17 year old uh, grandson along. He loved it. And I think, don't get me wrong, looking towards 2025 for the signature groups, it was either Greek Isles or Australia, New Zealand that, that someone is bringing their grandson along that trip. And now that I say it out loud, I'm pretty sure it was Greek Isles. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, from the MOA side of it, um, if you want to bring your your kids or your grandkids or whatever, um, absolutely bring them. I mean, they will be absolutely enthralled uh, with the train trip. What yeah, what kid does not yeah. like riding on a train? And then you yeah. add the wildlife outside the windows of trains. Yeah. Um, August so, is one hundred percent right. They will be glued <laughs> to that window, um, excited every animal they see along the way. Uh, are there any post-trip options with the group once in Vancouver? We have not set up any post uh, groups in Vancouver. If there's an interest for that, we could certainly look into that. Um, but we have not done that yet. When we, As I mentioned, we did uh, the Rockies to Red Rock mm -hmm. 
in 2021, in 2022, and 2023. Um, we did the first passage to the West both years, uh, opposite directions each time. Um, and there was no really, we didn't really have a lot of interest in it, so we didn't put anything together. Um, we could certainly help you on an individual basis. And once we start working on that, you know, once again, uh, you'll be working. Uh, we, we have limited people on these groups. So if you are looking at the Rocky Mountaineers group, you'll either be talking to Mike, Lisa, or Steve. That's right. Mike, Lisa, and Steve are the three that are working on this. So if you're interested in any group posts, um, let them know. And if there's enough interest, we absolutely will look to put something together. It would probably be independent from Rocky Mountaineer August. I don't think you guys that offer posts in Vancouver, do you? Or is that something we should talk to Elaine about? Elaine um, is, I'd say works for, get, for Rocky Mountaineer. And me. I'd say probably talk to Elaine. Um, I know that we've started doing a uh, Vancouver Island or a uh, Victoria, uh, Victoria uh, day, day trip. Um, I don't remember if we're operating that in 24 or 25. Um, but uh, even if we're not offering the Victoria day trip, uh, that's another great option that uh, there are plenty of tour operators that still um, uh, still run that trip. So it's it's you're able to book that um, uh, either with or separately from Rocky Mountaineer. Gotcha. Ted asked a question about the MOA chapters, and that's, that's something that, uh, Ted, I'll send you an email. Uh, I'm more than happy to talk uh, mm -hmm. about uh, your chapter. Um, we'd love to work with your chapter, promote this to your chapter members, maybe get a small subset of your chapter members to go. So let's say, even if it's just two or three or couples or something like that, uh, I'm sure they'd love to go with uh, with their fellow MOA members. One of the great things about these MOA groups though, um, it's not only the MOA members you know, so let's say the chapter does three, four, uh, cabins, not cabins, rooms, or, or whatever. So you have a small group of eight. Really, um, they're all MOA members you just haven't met yet. I always like to use the term, you know, friends you just haven't met yet. So, um, Ted, I'll, 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 I I will make sure I drop you an email and would love to talk to you about uh, working with your uh, group. Uh, August did not say we were having um, the uh, Red Rocks, um, excuse me, the Rocky to Red Rocks in two months. Um, if you want to go on your own, you can absolutely give us a call or drop us an email. That's the other thing I probably should have mentioned early on. Um, if you want to do Rocky Mountaineer, we book people that are not part of the MOA groups. So if you look at it and you go, I want to do Journey to Clouds, but I would rather go in July or September than go in August, we can absolutely book that through for you. Um, it'll be the same experience minus the camaraderie of going on a group with your fellow MOA members. Likewise, if you want to do the Rockies to Red Rocks this year or any of their other itineraries, you can absolutely book it. Um, we are here to help whenever you want to go, but we are looking at putting a group together in 2025. Um, we don't have a date yet, we, so if we don't have a date, we don't know the pricing, but there will be a Rockies to Red Rock um, uh in, in 2025, and it's the number of people that have asked about it uh, just convinces us more and more that that's going to just be a huge success as well. Uh, what is not included in the cost? Are there any additional costs? Of course, there would be the meals that are not included. So when you look at the itinerary, if lunch is included, you'd be on your own for breakfast and dinner. Um, August, what, what additional would be included? I know that the tour guides tips are included. So Correct. other than yeah, the, the tour guide tips are included, tips. yeah, the, the tour guide tips are included, as well as the onboard host gratuity are included. Uh, so you're good there. So it's the flights to and from, uh, any souvenirs that you want to you want to take home, um, um, and then uh, the uh, the meal, a, a few of the meals. Um, yeah. But we do have some lunches along those those tour days yeah. um, that are included. And, and so I, I, I'm trying to think of things that the other expenses might have. You mentioned, um, you obviously mentioned uh, the souvenirs. A portage of bags is included um, in those. Yeah, types. The, the luggage transfers, the personal yeah. transfers, uh, th those things are all included. So um, maybe the, I can't remember how you packaged it, but maybe the transfer from the Calgary airport to the hotel, and then maybe from the Vancouver hotel to the airport. Um, potentially. 
Uh, okay, so another Red Rocks Rockies question. Okay, I, I as, as I think this is Gary who I answered incorrectly before. Rockies to Red Rocks, which is a train trip in the United States, is not part of this uh, Journey to the Clouds trip, which is in Canada. We are not doing a group for the Rockies Red Rocks uh, this year. If you want to go as an individual, you can absolutely go. We will have a MOA group. Uh, in 2025 I, I i think we need to uh push to get this get that date set quicker since we have as many questions <laughs> sounds like that it as we do um uh arrival times in calgary and departure from vancouver for the tour um absolutely so the arrival into calgary um uh that evening is your your hotel stay right at the delta so uh, whatever flight that you find, wherever you're flying in from and flying to Calgary, um, that is, uh, that's your arrival time. Um, and then same thing for the, the, uh, the flight home out of, out of Vancouver, right? So, um, you've got your, your evening at the, um, uh, Fairmont hotel, Fairmont hotel, Vancouver, right? Uh, so that morning when you wake up, you check out of your room. Um, if you've got a, a morning flight, then you head to the airport. If you've got an evening flight, you've got the uh, the afternoon free to um, go uh, go walk around Vancouver. So um, the whatever flights that um, uh, you find or Moa finds are are your arrival and departure times. Okay, uh, I I did just notice it's two till three. We try to keep these webinars to one hour. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of close for those that want to uh, jump off. But August and I will stay and answer questions until we get through all of them. Um, just a quick reminder, um, we only have 50 spots, uh, six spots are already taken, three rooms are already taken, that's six people, um, so we only have 44 spots left, so uh, please give us a call at that number or drop us an email um, if you want more information, um, give us a call, drop us an email, uh, talk to one of our travel consultants, they can answer any questions you might have, uh, and let's